בשם השם נעשה ונצליח, שיעור תורה, ברוכים הבאים. חברים יקרים, we are back here from Jerusalem, עיר הקודש, the holy land, and we are at war. And the war is not stopping, and it doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. And we're going to talk about tonight, what should Jews do right now? Uh, what should the Jewish people do right now? What should the supporters of the Jewish Jews do right now? And what the terrorists should do, we already know, they should simply kill themselves. But as far as the Jews, of course, we have to understand what should we do? What should we do? That's what we need the Holy Torah to understand what's really important at this time. And Be'ezrat Hashem Na'asev and Atzliach. Tonight's shiur is going to be for the Refuah Shlema, for all of those that have been injured and hurt and traumatized by these evil terrorists over this uh, last week. And uh, Be'ezrat Hashem, it's also going to be for Elu Nishmat, of all of the murdered people uh, by these terrorists, uh, Ishmaelim. And may HaKadosh Baruch Hu use their uh, mutilations and strange deaths as a kapara, as a kapara for whatever they've done during their lives that was against the Torah. And uh, tonight she will also be for the Refuah Shlema for Rav Ephraim Ben Shulamit, Rabbanit Sara Bat Anat, Rabbanit Levana Bat Sara, Avi Mori David Ben Esriya, Imi Morati Doris Bat Jora, and all of Am Yisrael and all the righteous Noahites that continue to support all of our shirim, all of our teachings, and grow closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as that's the purpose of life. Now, of course, we have a, a lot of tension in the air right now, and a lot of tension in houses, and uh, a person knows exactly where his emuna is right now, based on how his house is. If you're seeing a lot of tension in the house, there's arguments between the husband and the wife, then you see that at least one of the people in the house is lacking. Is lacking, lacking a connection, a real connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a real belief in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And this doesn't necessarily make the person a bad person, it just means that they have to work on themselves. On the other hand, if you're seeing like some of the uh, young, beautiful kids that we see in the streets playing as if nothing is wrong, you not only know that their parents uh, that the kids are doing okay, but you also see that the parents are doing okay, where they're living their life. And yes, anytime these terrorists, the Ishmaelim, attack us with one of their missiles or many of their missiles, we simply go to the uh, place that we're supposed to go to and HaKadosh Baruch Hu protects us, just like he's been protecting us all of these years. But the question still remains, what should the Jewish people do at this time? And you're seeing the, uh, a lot of opinions out in the air, but uh, as we already know, nothing matters aside from HaKadosh Baruch Hu's opinion. Nothing matters aside from HaKadosh Baruch Hu's opinion. And that's really one of the things that a person needs to know. So on one hand, <clears throat> we spoke about last week uh, about the possibilities of this being the beginning of the end, meaning the beginning of the famous War of Gog and Magog. In fact, our own very dear Rosh Kolel, Rav Shavit, elaborated on a shiur today, uh, that uh, one of the things that uh, the, the uh, Chachamim say uh, as uh, part of the uh, prophecy of uh, Gog and Magog is uh, that a dome is going to come and help uh, Israel initially fight Ishmael. That will start the fight between Ishmael and uh, and uh, Edom, and then obviously eventually they'll turn on Israel. But there's also other details, other details we didn't mention last week that uh, are uh, absolutely amazing. One of them being that uh, Gog will come to Israel. Gog himself will come to Israel. Uh, and some Chachamim ch- say he'll come three times. And he'll come at a specific time. And uh, in fact, uh, some are saying, look, the leader of a of a dome is coming to Israel next week. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the, literally is the uh, beginning of the end or even the middle of the end. And a lot of people are scared, but at the same token, anyone that has learned Torah and actually has the basic foundations of Emunah and Bitachon and HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows that there is no place in the world that's safer for the Jewish people than the Holy Land. This is a simple fact of reality. And, and one of the things that uh, people are thinking that if they run away, you know, some people that were here visiting, some people that are living here, they're thinking that, you know, maybe there's war here, and perhaps if, you know, I don't know when it's going to be over, how many more missiles, there's danger, there's this, we can't rely on the government, we can't rely on the army, especially after we saw what happened last week. 
So maybe if I run away and I run back to uh, different parts of Europe or America or South America, or North America, I don't know, uh, Antarctica, wherever they're going to run away to, perhaps I'm going to be safer. Well, this is a, uh, if not an illusion, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's literally just a, uh, something that people are fooling themselves to believe that there is any more safety for anybody in the world aside from where they are. Why? Because as our Chachamim has told us, and Rav Al-Khanan Vassaman wrote it extensively in his uh, Ikvita de Meshicha, and also uh, other Chachamim have mentioned it in the Gemara, in Maseret Chulin, that for every single little person that lives in this world, before HaKadosh Baruch Hu decides that this person will get pricked by a little needle, a little needle in his finger, there's a bed in heaven, which in so many words elaborates to that every bullet has a name on it. No one can help you or hurt you aside from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So if you think that you're going to be safer in one place versus another place, then in so many words, you don't believe in the basic principle of our faith, which is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one that created this world, he monitors this world, and he literally gives this world life every single second that it exists, which includes yours. And if he decides you're going to live, then you will live and no one in the world can hurt you. If he decides otherwise, then no one in the world can help you. This is one of the things that a person must believe, must believe in order for them to be connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Anything else, if not delusional, it's outright heresy. And that's really one of the things that a person must understand, that it's not the land it's not the location, it's not the house, it's not the gun, it's not the army, it's not the government, it's not anything in the world that decides whether you're going to have good or bad. No one is going to decide that. Only HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Only HaKadosh Baruch Hu will decide whether you live or, or not. And that's one of the things that a lot of people are realizing almost too late right now that they are lacking. Because as soon as... As you saw, the, the, the missile and the attack and the panic and the hysteria, literally people were willing to spend every single penny that they have just to get on the next plane to get out of here. And they're getting on all of these programs from different countries that are, you know, taking people out as if there is literally tanks in the streets. Let's relax right now. The attacks that we have right now certainly are horrible. The attacks that we have, there is literally thousands and thousands of of missiles being shot at Israel right now. The media doesn't really cover any of that. It only covers the counterattack that Israel is doing against the terrorists, against the Ishmaelim, which, as we've said many times, is not sufficient. They should be much more aggressive than what they are right now. But the point being is, is that the uh, the people that are here, Bo Hashem, they're alive and well. They're okay. We're doing okay right now. Aside from the massacre that happened last week and more bodies that are being found and more terrorist is, is attempts are, are happening, overall, if you look at the grant, uh, the big picture, Baruch Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu is showing us who's really in control. Who's really in control? I mean, if you look at the map, if you look at the world map and you see how many Arab enemies the, the Jews have right now ver and their size and their scale versus the tiny little size of, of Israel, you literally realize that all of this time we've been living by a pure miracle. All of this time we've been living by a pure miracle because if you compare two billion Muslims that want to kill us in comparison to a tiny little nation with several million Jews, if they just simply spit, the saliva would drown us if Hashem wanted it to happen. So no weapon, no gun, no enemy will hurt us unless Hashem allows it, unless HaKadosh Baruch Hu allows it. And this is what every single Jew must literally engrave into their heart, engrave into their heart. Now to look at the picture even dip deeper, a person must understand this. If this is indeed the end of days, this is indeed the end of days, then the best place in the world to be in is Israel. Why? This is where the Mashiach is going to be. He's not coming to your house in America. He's not coming to your house in your community in, uh, in Arkansas. He's not coming to your community in Baltimore. He's not coming to your community in Australia, in Sydney over there. He's not coming to, uh, to uh, Belgium, and he's certainly not coming to London. He's going to be in Eretz Yisrael, and every single Jew is going to cry if he's not here at the time that they literally have the opportunity to not only see 
the Mashiach himself, but to see how Kadosh Baruch Hu's power and how he destroys the enemy. So a person has to realize that if this indeed is the end of days, this is the best place in the world. Now, this doesn't mean that it's going to be all roses. This doesn't mean that uh, everything is going to be fine and you're going to be sitting on a, uh, on a beach somewhere just enjoying the sun, even though the sun eventually does come out and burns all of the enemies. Needless to say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to protect those that are righteous. Wherever they are in the world, he's going to protect those that are righteous. He's not going to hurt you just because you're living in his country, in his beautiful land that he gave us already at the time of creation. So a person must understand that if you do believe this is Gogu Magog, the last thing you should be thinking of is leaving. You should be thinking on, let me get some popcorn and enjoy the show. Why? Because if I've worked on myself all this time to keep Shabbat, to protect my breed, to be honest in business, to do everything that the Torah requires, there's nothing I have to worry about. On the other hand, if I have not, if I've been deceitful in business, if I've been wasting seed, if I've been desecrating Shabbat, if I've been walking around immodest, if I've been doing things that are against the Torah, you have everything to worry about no matter where you are. Even if you're in a kotel, you're in pro- you have serious problems. Even if you're literally inside, inside the Kodesh Kodeshim, you're still in trouble. It doesn't make a difference where you are. Why? Because Ubalet Zion Goelish of Pesha Biyakov, Akadosh Baruch Hu is going to send the Goel, is going to send the Mashiach to go and bring salvation to those that have repented, those that have done tshuva. And this is what people fail to understand because they could learn Torah for a year, for five years, for 10 years, for 20 years, for 50 years, and they know all of the prophecies, they know all of the promises that Hashem said about Biata Mashiach, Hevle Mashiach, all of the different issues relating to it, but the moment something looks a little bit scary, they run away and they think that they go back to their illusion. Don't live an illusion. Don't force yourself to go back to the illusion. If this is indeed the end then certainly there's no better place in the world to have front row tickets. Front row tickets to where everything is going to happen. And if you are righteous, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will protect you. He'll protect you and will protect everything that's dear to you, so long as those other things that are dear to you are not against Hashem. Now, on the other hand, if a person thinks that this is not the end, this is not the end, perhaps he thinks or she thinks that uh, this is just another war, this is just a, uh, uh, another uh, situation that is certainly uh, uh, a, a tragic, horrible war. People die, all these horrible things that happen. Then uh, whether you leave or stay depends on what you're leaving and what you're staying for. It depends on what you're leaving and what you're staying for. If you came here for a vacation, you want to go home, go home. You came here for vacation, you have your job waiting for you, you have your family waiting for you, you have your uh, uh, chavuta learning Torah waiting for you, by all means, go home, go home today, go home tomorrow, go home wherever you want. If you came here for vacation, you weren't planning on moving here, you, uh, you want to go home, go home, by all means, go home, you have nothing to do here, go home. If you live here, you're going to move back to what? To, to, a, to a different place for what purpose? You're going to move back to America for what purpose? You're going to move back to England for what purpose? What, you think it's safer there? Have you seen the streets in London? Have you seen the streets in America? Have you seen the protests with thousands upon thousands of people literally screaming out in the streets that they're looking for Jewish blood? And you think that's safer? Oh, no, but it hasn't been violent yet. 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 Don't forget, we've spent a lot of time not only learning Torah, but also we've learned a lot of history. If, if you look at the history of the Jewish nation, literally pogroms, pogroms have been a standard in our, in our history. Whether it's the pogroms that took place in the late 1800s in Russia, in different places in Europe, literally they would massacre groups and communities of Jewish people on a regular basis. Or are we talking about the, uh, the, the safe place? You're looking at England. They had a major massacre over there in the 1100s. You had countless massacres in Spain, countless massacres in Russia, in Poland, literally all over the world. All over the world there's been attacks against the Jewish people. And one of the things that you feel the difference when you are actually in Eretz Israel is that, you know what? There was a massacre last week, but at the same token, when you look around, you see your brothers. 
You see your sisters. You see people that want good for you. You see people that are crying with you. You see people that will try to help you. Whereas on the other hand, if you're in the middle of America, you're in Florida, you're in New York, you're in uh, Jahannam, wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in the world, if Kadosh Baruch Hu allows the, the, the Edom or Ishmael or any of our enemies to do what they really have been wanting to do, literally have been feeding to do and salivating to do like vicious animals, if he allows these protests and these vicious monsters to do what these monsters did over here in Israel, you don't think it's going to be much, much worse wherever you are. Here you had several thousand terrorists break the border with some weapons and look how much they did. In America, they don't need to break any borders. In Europe, France, England, they don't need to break any borders. In South Africa, they don't need to break any borders. In fact, nowhere else do they need to break any borders. They don't need to have the same big mission. All they need to do is to get permission from HaKadosh Baruch Hu and they can literally do whatever they want in many of these places. Like for example, like America, you can get machine guns practically in a local supermarket. Only thing that is allowing the Jewish people to survive every single day for the last 3,334 years is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, by miracle, every single day allows us to survive. By keeping the enemies busy, by getting the enemies to fight each other, by simply giving us more time. But every so often, he gives us a wake-up call. And if that wake-up call happens in America, if that wake-up call happens in, uh, in, uh, in, in Europe, if it happens anywhere, chas v'shalom, but if it happens, the reality is you're going to look around, you're not going to see your friends. You're going to see more murderers coming after you. You're going to see more people celebrating your death, <clears throat> just like they have over the centuries. That's one of the things that people must understand. If you're thinking to leave Israel because you think you'll be safer in some other country, you're simply fooling yourself. There are many more enemies elsewhere than there are here in Eretz Yisrael. Regardless of what your opinions are of the secular Zionist uh, Torah enemy government that they have, regardless of what your, your opinion is of the prices here, regardless of what your opinion is about, the, it doesn't make a difference. I'm talking about outright life, death, living standards, who's your friend, who's your enemy, who's your neighbor, who's, who's simply trying to cause you problems and, and, and more. If you're talking about pure safety, there's no place on earth that is safer for the Jewish people than in the land of Israel. But that does not give everyone safety. Why? Because if you are a heretic, if you're causing people to sin, if you are in essence an enemy of God, you have no assurance of safety anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be in your bathroom by yourself and no one came to your house and still have a stroke and there's no more life. That's what people simply fail to understand. And living life without bitachon in Hashem, without emunah in Hashem, without having confidence and faith in Hashem is literally living a nightmare because you have no one to help you, no one to answer your questions. You're leaving everything to your own, uh, your own intellect, your own experience, and in so many words, your own luck or lack of it. And by the time you realize that you were wrong, it's already too late. So let's make sure that we all realize that the only reason why we all live every single second is because HaKadosh Baruch Hu allows it. And it doesn't make a difference whether there's a missile or there's a war or there isn't. So if you think that this is the end, living in Israel is certainly the best place. Now, if you can't live in Israel for different reasons, no problem. But the point is, is that if you're already here, there's no reason to leave. Leave. There's no reason to live if you think it's the end. If you don't think it's the end, you just think it's a bad time. If a, uh, you, you live here, there's no reason to leave either. If you're able to make a living here, you're able to learn Torah here, your kids are going to good yeshivas over here, there's no problem. If you're living a secular life, then obviously you have a, a serious problem regardless of where you live. And I keep mentioning that over and over again because that's going to be one of the big parts we're going to see in the Torah. Now, on the other hand, if it's not the end, if it's not the end, then again, 
Why would you be here? Why would you stay here? Why would you leave? If you're on vacation, it's a different story. Go wherever you want to go, wherever you need to go. But if you leave here, to think that you can have more safety in a place like uh, like uh, uh, the UK right now that is having open protests for th- tens of thousands of people that are literally running in the streets behind some fanatic psychopath named Muhammad Hijab that is screaming in the streets proudly that he is looking for Jewish blood. They were allowing this to happen. Or in Germany or in, the, in America or in all of these places where they're allowing literally people to say things that are provoking violence that are telling you they intend to be violent just the moment the button is pressed the moment they're given the instructions they're all going to become violent people are looking for a fight people are looking to kill literally they're salivating and it's all over the world so where are you exactly safer and that's why the Gemara in Masechet Sota, page 49, and also the Gemara in Masechet Sanhedrin in Perik Chelik, says at the end of days, before Mashiach comes, en al mi ela el avinu we will have nothing to rely on other than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. <clears throat> So all of these special plans to, to, uh, to you know, get people out of Israel, and, you know, and again, it's, it's a nice gesture by different places, different countries, and so on. <clears throat> but for a Jew that actually has real emunah in Hashem, this is not relevant. Now, I live in America. I'm here in, 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 in Israel right now. People are asking me, are you coming back? When are you coming back? Sure, you know, if, if, if this is the end, I'm not coming back. If this is not the end, then at some point I'm going to come back, depending on what, what, what the plan is. But as far as to go run, tail between our legs, who are you running from? You think that you can dodge a bullet? You think you could dodge death? If you earn life, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give you life. If you earn death, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu <laughs> will give you death. That, this is one of the things that people simply fail to realize. And that's why <clears throat> when people are asking me you know, these types of questions, the number one thing that I'm realizing is that they have to learn more about what the Torah says. And the last prophet, which we already spoke about a little bit last week, Prophet Malachi, when you learn the entire book of Malachi, it's a relatively short book, it's only a few chapters, but you learn it with commentaries. Literally, your lights, your, your eyes are, 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 are become like bright lights and you're seeing literally everything that has transpired in the last several years, in every single generation, and even more so, you're seeing the instructions from Akadosh Baruch Hu, of what really matters at this time. Whether it's Gog Magog and Gog or the leader of Edom or whoever is coming here next in a few days or it's not and it's just simply a wake-up call or it's somewhere in between or whatever it is, it doesn't make a difference. Why? Because what really matters right now is what the Prophet Malachi is telling us. And we're going to read it. We're going to go over some parts of it and Bezat Hashem we're going to see what a Kadosh Baruch Hu thinks. What a Kadosh Baruch Hu thinks at this time. Because if not for what he tells us, we are blind in darkness. The prophecy of the word of Hashem to Israel by the hand of Malachi. The Chachamim say Malachi was really Ezra Sofer, the Targum Yonatan, and also the Radak say that the last prophet, Malachi, was really Ezra Sofer. And they based it based on the fact that he rebuked Am Yisrael on the same issues of desecrating Shabbat, intermarriage, in the same way, same fashion as Ezra Sofer. And Malachi, in essence, means my, uh, my uh, messenger. My messenger. So the prophet say, says, in the name of Hashem, I loved you, says Hashem. But you say, how have you loved us? Was not Esav the brother of Yaakov, the word of Hashem? Yet I loved Yaakov. See, here this verse, it's a famous verse. We've used it at times, but we're going to clarify. What, this, what does this mean? This is a conversation of back and forth between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and his children. 
And Hashem says to his children, I love you. And his children are saying, how have you loved us? What is this like? If somebody loves you, and they say, I love you, and you, you're close to that person, you're not going to ask him, how do you love me? Because you already know. You already know. But if somebody is not close to you, and all of a sudden they say, you know what, I really love you. What do you typically think? You're thinking, okay, what does he want now? What is he going to ask? What's the catch? What's the trick here? What does he want from me? And unfortunately at this time, Am Yisrael was distant from Hashem, and they say, what are you, what, what, how, how did you love us? Or how have you loved us? Meaning, they were so distant from Hashem, they were asking as if, what do you want now? Like, what's, uh, what, what, you want more mitzvot, more? Or maybe, you love us just because, you're saying you love us because of our forefathers. But us, ourselves, you don't love. So Hashem says, no, no, no. You, you, you I love. You I love. And it's not because of your forefathers. And I'll prove it to you. How? Look, Esav was the brother of Yaakov. They were both the sons of Yitzchak. They were both the grandsons of Avram. I loved Yaakov and Esav. I hate him. I hate Esav. I didn't hate Esav because of his father. I didn't hate Esav because of his grandfather. The opposite. The opposite. Those were reasons for me to love him, but I still hated him. Why did I hate him? Because of how he acted. Because he chose to go against the Torah. Because he chose to go against the Torah, I hated myself. But Yaakov, on the other hand, I loved Yaakov. Not just because his father and his grandfather, but rather because of his actions. Because he followed the Torah. Because he followed the Torah, that's why I love him. This Rabotai Karim is a prophecy for our days today. Anyone out there that is wants to know, what does Hashem think about me? What does Hashem think about me? People ask me that sometimes. How do I know what Hashem thinks about me? Simple. What do you do with your life? Do you follow the Torah? Or do you ignore the Torah? Do you make shortcuts in the Torah? Or do you look for what's the honest truth and what should I do? Are you looking to live a life of Torah? Or are you looking to live a life of materialism? What's important to you? Is Hashem important to you? If He isn't, then why should you be important to Him? This is a, an important question that if a person wants to know, who does Hashem love? HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us clear definition. I'm not going to love you just because of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. I'm not. Why? I'm going to love you if you follow my Torah. If you don't, You'll be like Esav, even if you're a descendant of the same Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. This Rabotai is an important, an important message to every single person today. Today, your relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu will determine whether Hashem will protect you and your family or not. Whether HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves you or not. And even though there are definitely Different places that you see where Hashem loves Hashem, Hashem loves Am Yisrael, you know, and He promises never to destroy them. Yes, you're right. At the same token, you see the Rambam writes that before a person does tshuva, he's he's, he's a sinner. He's considered disgusting, an abomination, a hater, an enemy of God, and all types of horrible adjectives describe an enemy of God. But after he does tshuva, he's loved, he's beloved, he's a friend, he's, uh, he's important, he's all these wonderful things. So we see that there is a difference between what some Chachamim are saying and what Chachamim are saying. So what's the clarification? Clarification is as follows. When it's talking about the nation as a whole, HaKadosh Baruch loves us. It's unconditional love and he promises to always keep Am Yisrael. He will rebuke us, he will punish us, but he will not destroy us like he destroyed all of our enemies, the, uh, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the uh, 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 Spaniards, the Romans, the Greeks, soon the Ishmaelim, and all of the other enemies of Am Yisrael. He's not going to destroy us like he's going to destroy them, or he did destroy them, but he does certainly hurt us, he does certainly punish us. But when it comes to individuals, that's a different story. He will love you or hate you 
based on how you act. You follow the Torah, you're beloved with Hashem. You ignore the Torah, you're an enemy of God. You're a heretic, you're an idol worshiper, you cause people to sin, you cause people to go away from Hashem, you cause Jews to die in different ways, you're an enemy of God, and your punishment will literally be endless. And this is Rabotai, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu starts off with in this prophecy. Furthermore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I made his mountains a desolation and gave his heritage to the desert serpents. Though Edom will say, we have become destitute, but we will return and rebuild the ruins. Thus says Hashem, Master of Legions, they may build, but I will tear down. They will be called the boundary of wickedness and the people whom Hashem has condemned forever. And your eyes will behold it. And you will say upon the territory of Israel, may Hashem be glorified. Here, Kadosh Baruch Hu is telling us a short message to all of the enemies of his Torah, all of the people that are part of Edom, that are idol worshippers, that are missionizing for Jews to abandon Judaism, all of those people, the end doesn't look very good. You want more, more details? Go to the prophet Ovadia. Prophet Ovadia, the whole book is about this. The whole book is about it and literally talks about what's going to happen to Edom. Either way, Rabotai Karim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that this Edom, this Esav, he may build. He'll build big empires, big towers, big cities, big countries, big budgets, big markets, and Hashem destroys and let me build again. Big towers, big buildings, big cities, big markets, and Hashem destroys. And we've seen this time and time again. We've seen the Romans, we've seen the Greeks, we've seen the Spaniards, we've seen the Nazis, we've seen a lot of them. Go up, 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 boom. Up, 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 boom. Why? Hashem keeps them under control, under control until the end. Where those that remain enemies of God and His Torah are annihilated permanently. And those that are his servants will actually see this and Hashem's name will be glorified. Hashem's name will be glorified. Now, furthermore, the one thing that we see across the entire book of Malachi is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu continues to describe himself as God, Master of Legions. Hashem, that is not just the Hashem that we know, but Hashem Tzavakot. Hashem Tzavakot. What does it mean? Hashem is telling us here, I don't need you as a people. I don't need this world. If you're telling me what? I need servants? I am the God Master of Legions. I have countless angels at all times. And you see literally in almost every single verse in the book of Malachi, Hashem describes himself as Hashem Tzavakot, Hashem Tzavakot, Hashem Tzavakot, Hashem Tzavakot, over and over again to constantly remind us that He is the greatest God. He is the only true God. He doesn't need the creation. He doesn't need anything. He has endless amount of servants. All of this that's done in this world is for you, my dear son. For my dear children. Am Israel. It's not for Hashem's sake. He doesn't need this. This Rabotai is important for a person to know and not get confused to think that, oh yeah, God needs my good deeds. God needs my staka. God needs my charity. God needs my uh, uh, mitzvahs. God, God doesn't need anything. If he needed something, then whoever is the one that provided them, that's God. And obviously we know that's not possible. So furthermore, the prophet tells us, aside from letting us know that a Kadosh Baruch Hu is the master of legions, he hates people based on their actions and not necessarily based on where they came from. Like if somebody, sometimes I meet people and I say, oh, listen, you uh, observe Shabbat, you keep kosher. He goes, oh, listen, uh, my grandfather was a big rabbi. Okay, great, but what about you? 
Well, my uh, grandmother was a uh, big tzaddikah. Fantastic. But what about you? Uh, not so much. Not so much. Listen, no matter how great your grandfather was, he wasn't greater than Avram Avinu. Esav's grandfather was Avram Avinu. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu says here, I hate Esav. I hate Esav. Why? Because of what he did. Because of what he did. Just like Hashem hates Ishmael, that is literally doing all types of evils in the world right now to cause as much harm as possible to the Jewish people, they may think that Hashem loves them, but they don't realize that Hashem hates them. And the prophet Daniel says that the biggest punishment, the biggest punishment that Hashem will give at the end of days will be to the biggest enemy of the Jews at the time, which is Ishmael. Unless, of course, we're talking about the nation individuals, everyone can make their choice whether you're going to be a supporter of Torah and the truth and and, 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 uh, and obviously love the Jewish people as children, then you are removing yourself from the status of being a uh, Hashem's, uh, you know, a uh, boxing bag in the future. You're, you're removing yourself from being destined to go to Gainom forever. But if you are supporting the terror, supporting the terrorism, supporting the, the, the horrible massacres that are happening, then of course you're, you are spilling your own blood. It's like committing suicide without even realizing it yet. Furthermore, the prophet gives us some more instructions. Some more instructions of what, how do we get to this point? Hashem says, despite the fact that I love you and I proved it to you, of how I love you for you and that one of the gifts that I gave you is to protect you, but even more so, eventually I'll allow you to see the demise of your enemies. What about now, let's talk about the feeling back. What you feel about me, says Hashem. Verse number 6 in chapter 1 says, A son will honor his father, and a servant his master. If I am a father, where is my honor? If I am a master, where is my fear? Says Hashem, master of legions, to you the Kohanim who scorn my name. You say, how have we scorned your name? You present my altar loathsome food, and you say, how have we loathed you? You, by your saying, the table of Hashem is repulsive. Here, Kadosh Baruch Hu says something that much breaks your heart when you really understand it. He says to us, a son honors his father, and a servant honors his master. So if you consider me your father, where is the honor? Where is the honor that you give God in your business? in your marriage, in your day-to-day -day life. Do you honor God on a day-to-day -day basis? Or you honor yourself, and if you happen to honor God in the process, that's good too. And if you consider me your master, where's the fear? Where's the Yirat Shamayim? Where's the fear of the Almighty? Did you think about the consequence of your sin before you did it? Did you think about the consequence of the adultery before you committed it? Not just the consequence of what your wife is going to think. The consequence of what HaKadosh Baruch Hu has to do to you as a result of your sin. Did you think about what's going to happen as a result of the immorality? Or you just ignored it? Hashem says, wait, you said I'm your master. So if I'm your master, how come you're not afraid of me? But yet the response was, when, 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 when do we act this way? People are acting stupid. So what, 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 what commandment are you actually following exactly? What ten commandments are you following exactly? So a person thinks that he's honoring God, but in reality, he's honoring himself. And that's what the prophet Isaiah says, In their mouth and their lips they honor me, but their heart was far from me. 
This Rabotai is important for a person to know that your honor of a Kadosh Baruch Hu is not something you keep in your heart. Your honor for a Kadosh Baruch Hu must be something that you're constantly thinking about and looking for ways to express on a regular basis. Whether it's in your job, or it's in your uh, 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 marriage, or it's in anything else that you do. Anything else that you do, it's important for you to express honor for HaKadosh Baruch in every single thing that you do. So, we're going to continue. Be'ezot Hashem. The Prophet says, HaKadosh Baruch comes to us with complaints. He says, you said I'm your father in heaven, you said I'm your master, but yet you don't honor me and you don't fear me. When you heard that the rabbi is speaking some strong words of Musa, talk about genom, talk about punishment for sins, what did you do? Shut off the video. You decided not to share it. You decided that you don't want to hear this type of stuff. Why? You don't want to be scared. I understand you don't want to be scared. But how are you going to know what to be scared about if you don't learn the Torah? How, do you, how are you going to be scared about the right things instead of being scared of the wrong things? The funny thing is that people have no problem being scared of poverty. But yet, they don't want to learn about what causes poverty. People have no problem being scared of disease. But they don't want to learn about why God brings disease. People have no problem being scared of loneliness, but they don't want to learn why Kadosh Baruch Hu decided to keep you alone. Oh, it's scary. So the reality is that people will spend a fortune going to scary movies and watching scary things that are not relevant to their life, but the things that are relevant to their life, they run away from. HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes to us with a complaint. HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes to us to complain and he's saying that this type of behavior is like you're scorning HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name. It's like presenting a loathsome sacrifice as if Hashem needs it. As if you're only going to watch the part of the Torah or read the part of the Torah that you agree with, that you like. You're only going to pray when you have time. When it's Time to pray. Everyone wants to go to the minyan that prays the fastest. When you go to the shiur, you ask the guy, oh, listen, how long is this shiur going to be? Oh, it's two hours? Ah, no, nah, I don't think I have time. But to watch a stupid football match or baseball game or some Hollywood film full of, full of perversion, you have two, three, four, five hours. No problem. Oh, I can't believe it was so short. It was only three hours? To watch a shiur Torah that could change your life and your eternity... Nobody has time. But yet, to watch perversion, to watch filth, to waste your time with video games, apparently that you have time. Kadosh Baruch Hu says, this is an act of simply loathing my Torah, making it as if my Torah is disgusting. As if the table of Hashem is repulsive. Furthermore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives gifts to different people. Different gifts to different people. And there's a commandment from the Torah, Kabed et Hashem me'onecha. Honor Hashem with your gift, whatever you have the, whatever you're gifted in. And Hashem says, if only there were one, if, there, if only there was someone among you who would shut the temple doors so that you could not kindle upon my altar in vain. I have no desire for you, says Hashem, Master of Legions, and I will not accept the offering from your hand. He, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, literally tells us that when we are serving him like liars, when we're serving him, as if we're doing him a favor, as if he needs us. He says, it's better off to just shut off, shut down, shut the shul. 
the synagogue, the yeshiva, whatever you have over there, just shut it off. Don't even come. Don't pray. I don't want it. If you're not going to serve a Kadosh Baruch Hu with all of your heart, a Kadosh Baruch Hu says, I don't want it. Because you're thinking that praying is for God's sake. You're forgetting that it's for you. You're thinking that learning Torah is for God's sake. You're forgetting it's for you. You're thinking that giving tzedakah, giving charity is for God's sake. As if he needs your money. You're forgetting it's for you. As a Kadosh Baruch Hu says, Lia kesef Elias azav neum Hashem tzevaot. Mine is the money, mine is the gold, says the God, the master of legions. When you give charity, you're in essence receiving something. You're not giving. You're taking something that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you and you're giving a piece of it, an eternal life. Hashem gave you 100,000 and you're giving 10, 20,000 for the sake of publicizing Torah. All you're doing is taking the gift that Hashem gave you that could have been simply temporary. You could spend it literally in a minute. You could buy a car, you could buy a million and a half different things, you could spend a hundred thousand, you could spend a million, you could spend ten million in five minutes. Somebody asked me, listen, if I gave you a billion dollars, how quick will it take you to spend it? I said, it depends. If I'm going to do what Hashem wants me to do, I could spend it literally in 24 hours. If I'm going to do whatever my physical body wants to do, oh, it'll take a long, long time. A car, and a plane, and a this, and a that. All the stupid things that people waste their life with. But the reality is when a Kadosh Baruch who gives you money, he gives you something that you can either make temporary or eternal. Temporary if you use it for beyond of what your basic needs are. You need to eat, you need to live somewhere, you need to drink, you need to, you know, basic life's needs. But then there's the extra money. That extra money that you have you can either spend it on more materialism that is temporary, that's only in this world, that will eventually get lost or is gone with the time, acquired by your enemies, acquired by people that care less about you, sold to people who don't even know you exist, and simply disappear into the air. Or you could take that money and you can invest it in publicizing Torah. Publicizing Torah that is eternal. What's an example of eternal Torah? Heretics and enemies of God and people that betrayed God have always existed. And the reality is, many of them wrote books. They wrote books, they wrote letters, they had communities, they had all types of things that they did. What you see is, all those heretics, all of those losers, all of those enemies of God, there's barely any recollection of their existence even in the world. On the other hand, we see a simple rabbi that learned Torah, dedicated himself, wrote a book, rewrote the same book a couple hundred times, sent it to different communities around the world in hopes that people read it there as well. HaKadosh Baruch Hu made sure that not only did the others around the world read it and follow it, but he made sure that they re he reprinted it countless times and we still have his Torah till this day. The Gemara, the Rambam, the different uh, Rishonim, the different uh, sages that we've had over the years didn't have major printing press houses where they were printing 25,000, 50,000 copies of every book. Literally, most of these great books were handwritten. A few copies were made sent to different parts of the world, that's it. Today, you could have something printed in, 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 on steel and you're lucky if it survives the year. You're lucky if it survives the year. Why? HaKadosh Baruch says, if you are contributing to my Torah, if you're dedicating your life to my Torah, you become part of the eternal part of the Torah. You become part of eternity. That's why when a person takes money and invests into the world of Torah to publicize more Torah, to, to, to help more people do tshuva, to do more things that are connected to the holy Torah, what are they doing? They're simply taking part of the gift that Hashem gave them. That's, instead of keeping it as a temporary gift, as a gift that's 
simply going to lose its value and its existence in a matter of time, he takes that part and he makes it eternal. He makes it eternal. Now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, if we're going to serve him seriously, he wants our prayers. But if not, he says it's better off to close down the yeshiva and the synagogue and everything else. Furthermore, he says something really horrific. Horrific for those people that are part of it. He says, But you def- uh, uh, oh, and he says, for my name is great among the nations, says Hashem, Master of Legions. But you defile it by your saying the table of the Lord is loathsome, and by your description of it, its food is repulsive. You say, behold, this offering is so burdensome, and you so and so you vex him, says Hashem, Master of Legions. You bring the stolen and the lame and the sick animal and bring it as an offering. Shall I accept it from your hand, says Hashem? It says, this of course is talking about the time of the Bet HaMikdash where there were wicked Kohanim that looked at parts of the Korban as disgusting, as something that's like, ugh, like, why does Hashem want this, this part? This chelev, this uh, uh, blood, they forget about the Nitzutzea Kodesh, the sparks of holiness that are part of all of these sacrifices. But what's relevant to us is what he says next. What he says next. Cursed be the charlatan who has a superior ram in his flock but vows and sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I am a great king, says Hashem, Master of Legions, and my name is awesome among the nations. Here, Kadosh Baruch gives a rebuke of all rebukes. He says, sometimes, you see, there's a rabbi that's trying to raise money for a good cause. Build a nice yeshiva, build a kolel, build a community, help the poor, do something good. And it's, you saw it. Therefore, Hashem is sending you the message. Contribute. In fact, you're part of that community. In fact, he's your rabbi. In fact, this is not somebody that you're not even sure who it is. You know everything 100%. He's the one that helped me do tshuva. He's the one that converted me. He's the one that uh, fixed my marriage. He's the one that introduced me to my spouse. He's the one that blessed me and then I had a kid. You know, this is it. You're not doubting whether he's real, not real. He's a heretic. No, no, none of that. You know this cause is real. You know that this rabbi is real. And then you say, listen, what do I have on me? Well, here, you know what? Here, $500, it's a lot. So it's the best I can do. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you say it's the best you can do to give $500 or $5,000 or $5 or whatever you said. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows you can do more. Why? Because he's the one that gave it to you. You say you have five hundred dollars, but the other pocket has five thousand. You say you have five thousand, but Akadosh Baruch Hu gave you tens of thousands, millions of dollars. You have five, six, seven houses; each one is worth a million dollars. And you think, no, no, but but I did good. I, I donated ten thousand. I donated five thousand. Yeah, but how come? What do you need five houses worth a million dollars each for? What do you need all this stuff for? No, you don't stand for retirement. For retirement, what are you talking about retirement? Right now you have an opportunity to be part, make your materialism part of eternity. And you're worried about retirement? You're worried about a, a short period of time that you're not even sure you're going to make it? This is the problem. And the Kadosh Baruch Hu says, when I'm the one that gave you, and you are a charlatan that lies about it, and say, I'm doing my best. Rabbi, I just made a big donation right now. I sent, and you see, oh, $160. Wow, okay, Baruch Hashem, thank you very much for the support. Really, really appreciate it. You're not going to say anything else. You don't know what he has, what he doesn't have. You don't know what she has, what she doesn't have. But a Baruch Hu does. A Baruch Hu does, and he says, 
In reality, instead of 160, you were supposed to give 1,600. In relation to what I gave you, you're supposed to give 16,000. In relation to what the rabbi did for you, what the Torah does for your life, you should have given 16 million. And you can, and you have it. Why? Why? Because what was it? Because I'm the one that gave it to you. And because you lie, you turn the blessing into a curse. Cursed be the charlatan who has a superior ram in his flock, but vows and sacrifices a blemished animal. To the Lord. You have a superior lamb. You can give more. You can do more. But it's like, no, it's the best I can do. Best you can do? No problem. If it's really the best you can do, HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows. If it's not the best you can do, also HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows. Also HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows. This is the mistake people make. They think that, oh no, listen, for the charity I can afford, Few thousand, but for the watches, I can afford 50, 100,000. It's a mistake. It's a mistake because you're thinking that the materialism is more important than eternity. The materialism is more important than, the, than that. And now, Kadosh Bahu is going to tell us something even worse. Chapter 2. And now the commandment is upon you, O Kohanim. If you do not listen and do not take it to heart to render honor to my name, says Hashem, Master of Legions, I will send the curse among you and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed it. For you do not take to heart your... You do not take to heart. Here, Kadosh Baruch Hu says, you see the problems that are out there? Missiles being shot intermarriage, all types of sicknesses, all types of problems anywhere, animosity, anti-Semitism, all that stuff. HaKadosh Baruch says, I did it. I did it. Why did I do it? Because you didn't take my commandments to your heart. When Am Yisrael was loyal to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, no one can touch us because everyone was afraid of us. The moment you see the animals chasing after a person it's only because the person has made enough sins that he starts to look like spiritually he starts to look like the prey of that animal says the Orachayim HaKadosh the moment Am Yisrael looks like a defeatable enemy that's only because Am Yisrael has made enough sins for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to change the vision of the enemy. And instead of fear us, they want to fight us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to us, I have so many blessings to give you, but you insist on having no gratitude or honor towards me, and therefore those blessings turn into curses. And behold, he says, I am suppressing the seed because of you, and I will scatter filth upon your faces. The filth of your festive offerings, your sin will carry you to this. It literally doesn't get any worse. Here, HaKadosh Baruch Hu already warned us, don't be stingy when it comes to publicizing to and contributing charity. Don't think that this world is the first and last world don't think like that. Why? Because if you're stingy when it comes to Torah, if you're stingy when it comes to dedicating your time, your resources, your gifts that Hashem gave you towards the purpose of life, HaKadosh Baruch Hu turns them to curses. And instead of making your charity that you finally give when you finally give it, instead of you giving 16,000, you gave 1,600 or 16 dollars or whatever you gave, that's not really what you're supposed to give. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Vezireti peresh al penechem. What's Vezireti peresh al penechem? I will scatter filth upon your faces. You know what filth is? What's peresh? That's the digested food. In your belly, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I'll take that and I'll throw it in your face. 
just to show you how disgusting your behavior is, Hashem says, I'm going to give you an example of how disgusting it is in a language that you could understand. I gave you such a gift. I gave you a mind where you can remember a lot of Torah. I gave you a, a bank account that you could literally open an empire of Torah. I gave you a, a mouth that could speak words of Torah. I gave you a community that literally you can rebuild Am Yisrael from. And what did you do? You spent your energy making all types of TikTok videos about your fain- fancy watch collection. You spent your energy making all types of videos and pictures about your fancy car collection. You spent your energy opening all types of businesses that take advantage of the public and violate the Torah at the same time. You spent your energy doing things against the Shem. So when you finally do give that charity, whether it be your time or your money, HaKadosh Baruch says, I don't even want that. I'm going to take that like it's filth and throw it in your face. So what happened? What does that mean? In practical terms, very simple. The guy could have donated to the right cause, but he simply chose not to. Well, he wanted to buy another watch. He wanted to buy another house. He wanted to do a lot of other things that are of materialism. Sakhalosh Bukhu says, instead, one day you're going to want to give. I'm going to make sure that what you give, you give to the wrong cause. So he gives it to some guy. He thinks the guy is going to do really good things with it. He's going to build homeless shelter. He's going to feed people. He's going to, you know, maybe open a, uh, a synagogue. He's going to do this, he's going to do that. In reality, what does the guy do? He takes the money, takes it to the casino. He donates to thieves. And today, Rabotai Karim, there's more donor fraud than ever before. There's more donor fraud than ever before. People are calling people pretending to be in need. People are making all types of campaigns saying you're supporting this, you're supporting that. In reality, you're probably supporting terrorism, if anything. You're not supporting the Torah. You're not supporting anything good. Why is Allah Hashem allowing that? Because those people that He's allowing to send their money to bad causes, Hashem says, I don't want it. I don't want it. You have had an opportunity to take the gift that I gave you and put it in the right cause you chose otherwise. So now that you finally want to give, I don't want it. Throw it in your face. I throw it in your face. So this Rabotai is very, very scary because it has to do with a lot of people. Now, it's easy to get support and donations and friends when somebody speaks nicely and politely and everybody likes him. But Hashem is going to tell us, who does he like? Who does he like? Which Mezakiah Rabim, which Kiruv Rabbi, which speaker does the Kadosh Baruch Hu like? Chapter 2 continues. Know that I have sent this commandment to you so that my covenant should be with Levi, says Hashem, Master of Legions. My covenant was with him, life and peace. I gave this to him for the sake of the fear for, of, with which he feared me. For he was in awe of my name. What is he talking about? He says, I'm giving you an opportunity to benefit from the covenant that I had with Pinchas. Pinchas ben Aaron ben... Uh, Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron Akoen. Pinchas had a covenant with Hashem called Briti Shalom. And Hashem says, why did I have this covenant with him? I had this covenant with him for the sake of the fear of which he feared me. For he was in awe of my name. Awe of my name. What is awe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name? What is the fear of Hashem? The Mari Diskin, when he was young, he was a, already a prodigy at a young age, seven years old, eight years old. They already knew he was something special. And he says himself that he thought one day, seven years old, eight years old, he's holy, he's crying over Am Yisrael, he's praying, he's learning, he's doing things that regular seven years old never do. 
And one day he looks at his holy father, who was one of the Gdolei Adol. He says, what's the difference between me and my father? He prays to Hashem. I pray to Hashem. He cries to Hashem. I cry to Hashem. He learns Torah. I learn Torah. What's the difference in the Yirat Shamayim that he has, the fear of the Almighty that he has versus me? And then, HaKadosh Baruch Hu answered him. How did he answer him? As he's thinking this, some people walk in to the Bet Midrash with faces of tragedy happened. They have in their hands a burned Sefer Torah. They say, where's, 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 the, where's the Rav? We need to ask him, what do we do with this burned Sefer Torah? As soon as the young Marid Diskin saw this, he started crying hysterical. Started crying at seven years old, crying hysterical. He saw the burned Sefer Torah. He says, he's over there, he's over there, he's in a, he's in a study. And he runs with them to his Abba. And he opens the door, he says, Abba, and he's crying hysterical, he can't stop crying. He says, Abba, Abba, look, there's a burnt Sefer Torah. As soon as his father heard and saw, heard those words and saw what his son was talking about, he immediately passed out, collapsed on the floor. And Marie Liskin says, at that moment, I understood there's a very big difference between my fear of heaven and my father's fear of heaven. It's nice to cry because you're connected to Hashem, because you love the Jewish people. It's nice. It's nice to cry because of the mistakes you've made. But certainly, it's a world of difference when you have some tzaddikim literally pass out because of their awe of Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to us, Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron HaKohen, his awe of the Almighty was so awesome that just hearing the name of Hashem would make his whole body tremble. Just hearing the name of Hashem. Anyone says Hashem, he starts trembling. That's how some tzaddikim write about themselves and write about others. When literally when they would hear, hear the name of Hashem, they would start trembling. Now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, why? why? Why was he so, why did I give him this covenant? Because of his awe. And furthermore, he gives us a map of what allowed Pinchas to become Pinchas. Not just at the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, but forever. The teachings of truth was in his mouth. And injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and with fairness and turned many away from iniquity. Here HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us who are his favorite speakers? Who are his favorite people that he loves them and he has a special covenant with them? Four different things. They teach the truth. Whatever comes out of their mouth is true. They don't make up lies. They don't have their own unique opinions. They simply say truth and nothing else. You ask a question, there's no, oh, maybe I should say this, maybe I should say that, maybe this will offend people, maybe this will make me unpopular, none of that stuff. This is one of the reasons why we had the lectures last week to explain the Torah perspective about what uh, to do at war when it comes to children, babies, uh, women, and how the Torah does not permit us to have any mercy whatsoever. Now this may have shocked certain people until they see that this is exactly what the Torah says. The only thing that should be shocking to you is that countless other scholars in the world of Torah are not teaching the same exact thing to the public right now and removing all of this liberalism that we have in the air that's poisoning people to make them think that we're supposed to have some type of proportionate response. This demented uh, 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 liberalism and, 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 and 
just senile type of thinking. A person must always say the truth and never think of what his interest is, what his opinion is, what this or what that is. Truth or nothing. The second thing, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, injustice was not found on his lips. You're not going to find Pinchas or anyone that's following in his footsteps do anything that's going to desecrate the name of God, that's going to defile the word of God, that's going to change the word of God in any way, shape, or form. No injustice. Third step. He walked with me in peace and with fairness. He wasn't worried about being in peace and in fairness with other people that pretended to be colleagues, pretended to be fellow rabbis, pretended to be uh, fellow community members. He wasn't worried about being fellows with them and walking in peace with them. Why? Because when you're with, in peace with Hashem, you're in peace with all of the people that want peace with Hashem. But when you're in peace with people, you could be an enemy of God at the same time. So it's important for a person to know the number one priority that you have in your life is your relationship with Hashem. It's more than your marriage. It's more than your parents. It's more than your children. It's more than yourself even. But for people that are worried about what the crowd is going to say and what the public is going to say and what the media is going to say and what this one's going to say and therefore they don't say because they're afraid of what everybody else is going to say, you're not walking with Hashem. You're not walking with Hashem. You want to walk with Hashem? Say the words of Hashem. Say the words of the Torah. Last but not least, for someone that wants this special covenant, the special Brit Shalom that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says hovered over Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aaron Akwain to the point where HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not allow him to die. He became Eliyahu Navi, who never died and is mentioned here at the end of Malachi's prophecy as he is the one that's going to introduce the Mashiach. He is the prophet. There has to be a prophet that introduces the Mashiach, that makes him Mashiach. Mashiach is to put the oil, special oil, but that has to be done by a prophet. Since there's no prophets in the world, what did Hashem do? There is a prophet in the world. His name is Eliyahu Navi. So here we see HaKadosh Baruch Hu is offering this opportunity of Brit Shalom to the one who says the truth? No injustice is found on his lips. He walks in peace with Hashem. And last but not least, he gets people away from sinning. He turns people away from sinning. He teaches them to stay away from pornography, never waste seed, never commit adultery, never be promiscuous. Make sure that if you're married, you keep family purity. Make sure that your business is honest according to the Torah. Make sure that you eat only kosher food. Make sure that you observe Shabbat exactly like the halacha. Make sure that you're charitable with your uh, donations and your, your, your assets. No less than, uh, than uh, what's, what's required by the Torah. And needless to say, push yourself as much as you can to do it more and more. Stay away from sinning. Su Vasetov. Stay away from evil and do good. When a person turns people away from sins, along with the other three steps, Hashem says, that is a person that will get the bleach on them. Now, each and every single person can have that. They don't have to be a famous speaker, they don't have to be a big rabbi. But they can be partners in all of this. 
And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says to us, Gadola me'aseh min ha'oseh. Greater is the person that enables a person to do, to do uh, a mitzvah than the person himself that did it. Meaning the people that contribute to the righteous cause literally have more benefit than the one that actually is doing the work. This also explains why Kadosh Baruch says that those that don't do it, don't give what they're supposed to give, get such a response that he mentioned before of throwing the filth on their face. Now, furthermore, there's one big promise that will show a person a Kadosh says, I like what you're doing. Huh? If you did everything that we just mentioned to get this bleach along, if you taught the truth, if you had no justice on your lips, if you walked with Hashem in peace and you turned many away from iniquity, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu makes a promise that at some point, at some point before Mashiach comes, at some point before Mashiach comes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to make a miracle for you. What's a miracle? For the lips of the Kohen should safeguard knowledge and people should seek teachings from his mouth. For he is an agent of Hashem, master of legions. He says, because you did all of this, I will make the words that come out of your mouth, these holy words, these truthful words, these words of Torah, I'm going to make those words be heard by the masses. And instead of only 10 people, you'll have 10,000 people, 10 million people listening to the truth that you want to tell, to help them. Why am I not going to give it to somebody else? That may be a better speaker, that may be more popular, that may be this, that may be that, because he had a gift, but he misused it. You simply use your best effort to do the will of Hashem. Now I'm going to make what you have into the greatest thing in the world. Hence the reason why HaKadosh Baruch Hu made Moshe Rabbeinu the ultimate speaker. Even though he had a speech impediment, he had a stutter, a stammer. But when he spoke words of Torah, the voice of God came out of his throat. So here we see Rabotai Karim how HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling us that we can turn things around. But, Hashem says, but you have veered from the path. You have caused many people to stumble through your teachings. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says Hashem, Master of Legions. And therefore, I have also made you repulsive and lowly to all the people because you do not observe my ways and you show favoritism in your teachings. He says, for all of those heretics, for all of those false teachers, for all of those people that may have a stage right now and a following right now, there's going to be an additional bonus for all the truthful people. What's, what's the bonus? You'll see all of those heretics, all of those Muhammad Hijab and Manus Friedmans and enemies of the Torah, all of them, you'll see their demise. You'll see their demise in such open fashion that literally the whole world is going to view them as the most disgusting creatures on planet Earth. No different than the person looks at the digested food inside a stomach. They're going to look at all of the people that speak against the Shem, all types of words of heresy, all types of words of idolatry, the world will look at them as the most vile, disgusting people on planet Earth. Repulsive and lowly to all people, says Hashem. Repulsive and lowly. Now, 
for those of you that want specific advice of what's simply a no-no at this time, where there's no more time for this type of sin, HaKadosh Baruch says the following, and again, we continue in the book of Malachi. We're still in chapter 2, or in verse 10. It says, May Hashem eliminate from the man who does this any child and descendant from the tents of Yaakov and anyone who might present an offering to Hashem, Master of Legions. He, HaKadosh Baruch punishes, or promises to punish, the karet, to a person that makes a specific sin. What is this sin? What is this sin? Hashem says, a person that cheats on his wife with a non-Jew, a person that has taken, a Jew that has taken marriage, the daughter of a foreign god, meaning a Jew that married a non-Jew. These types of people, Hashem says, I will eliminate them. There will be no memory of them left in the world and here he's not talking about enemies of the Jewish people like the terrorist Hamas here he's talking about your brother your sister your neighbor your cousin your uh, community member that's intermarried your best friend that's cheating on his wife your sister that's cheating on her husband people that commit adultery or people that are intermarried HaKadosh Baruch says he will eliminate them with a such a punishment that there will be no record of them. And why? Because Hashem says and this is the second sin that you commit. Meaning it's not the only thing that they've done. Not the only thing that they've done. Now, it also talks about people that are wasting seed, people that are promiscuous. These are things that Akadosh Bahu simply despises. Now, the wicked people responded and said, you say, why is this? Is It is because Hashem has testified between you and your wife of your uh, youth, whom you have betrayed, though she is your companion and the wife of your covenant. And you ask, but did not the unique one, let's talk about Avraham, do so as well? And he had an extraordinary spirit? What did the unique one seek? Godly offspring. However, you should guard your spirit and let it not betray the wife of your youth. See here, the prophet is telling us the real evil people will always manipulate their evil acts in order to justify them. No different than how the terrorists, Hamas, and their supporters, some of them are American, some of them are Europeans, some of them have never even seen Israel or even met a Jew in their life, but they hate and they like to hate. And they justify hate and they justify justify massacres. They justify evil. Hashem says this is not the only people that have the ability of the serpent to manipulate the truth about evil and make it look good. He says sometimes this is inside a person that has become addicted to sins, addicted to going against Hashem to the point where when Hashem says intermarriage is not allowed, and what are they going to say? Listen, Avraham Avinu did it, didn't he? They're going to say, listen, but such and such person did it and he came out okay. Look, this guy is not keeping anything, but he's uh, very rich. This rabbi is uh, doing this, but he, you know, they're going to look at, try to pick examples of some extreme that they're really trying to emulate, but in reality, it's just lying to themselves. Hashem says you can't compare. Why? 
you are intermarried because of your lust. Avraham Avinu, he married Hagar because he wanted to bring salvation to the world by bringing a child to the world. Because at that time, Sarah did not have the blessing yet. And 90 years have passed, almost. Or 80 years have passed at that point. So, what he did was not for his own lust, but what you're doing is. The same concept with people that justify promiscuity, adultery, all of these types of things that should look at the chapter 2 of the book of Malachi and see how much HaKadosh Baruch Hu hates people that commit adultery. How much HaKadosh Baruch Hu will punish those people. Not only for the act of adultery, not only for the wasting seed, but also for hurting Abat Israel, hurting one of his children. You don't want to be with them. Get a divorce. But to commit adultery is literally as despicable as can be. Lastly, HaKadosh Baruch Hu promises that for those that follow the Torah, for those that are honest in their servitude of Hashem, they will benefit in the end. How so? Behold, I am sending my messenger. This is chapter 3 now. And he will clear the path before me. Suddenly, the Lord whom you seek will come to his sanctuary. And the messenger of the covenant for whom you yearn, behold, he comes, says Hashem, master of legions. Who can bear the day of his coming? And who can survive when he appears? For he will be like the smelter's fire and like the launderer's soap. He will sit smelting and purifying silver. He will purify children of Levi and refine them like gold and like silver. And they will be for Hashem's presenters of offerings in righteousness. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to Hashem as in the days of old and in previous years. Here, Kadosh Baruch Hu is saying that before he eventually brings the Mashiach, he will bring a messenger. And some Chachamim say that this is not talking about one specific person as messenger, but anyone that is going to speak the words of truth like we spoke about before. Hashem is going to bring those messengers and those people are going to be given special abilities to reach much, much greater numbers, much greater impact. Because after them, there is going to be Eliyahu and Avi. And Eliyahu and Avi, before he introduces the Mashiach, he is going to purify. Purify people, meaning if a person is wicked, the purification process means that all the wickedness is burnt and nothing is left. If a person is righteous but has a few mistakes, then he's going to have to go through a few difficulties before he's pristine. But those that are not observing the Torah, observing the mitzvah, those that are haters of God, haters of the Jewish people, haters of the Torah, and so on, those people will be destroyed in this process. And Hashem says, and I will draw near to you for judgment, and I will be swift, witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely against those who exhort the wage of work of the worker, the widow and the orphan, and against those who wrong the stranger and do not fear me, says Hashem, Master of Legions. For I, Hashem, have not changed. And you, the sons of Yaakov, you have not perished. Here, Kadosh Baruch Hu is telling us that while the wicked people that prosper confuses people and makes people think that God loves wicked people and there's no justice, Hashem will send the prophet Eliyahu Navi as the messenger of the covenant who will eliminate the wicked people from the land in preparation for the Mashiach 
And although Hashem says, I let the wicked people prosper, it's not because I have changed and started liking wickedness, but because I'm merciful and patient with sinners. And just like I was merciful with you and patient with you, I'm merciful with other sinners, but the difference is that with you, I guaranteed your existence forever. Whereas the people are the enemies of Hashem, there's no guarantee for them. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, since the days of your forefathers you have veered away from my laws and you have not observed them, return to me and I will return to you, says Hashem, Master of Legions. But you say, for what should we repent? Some people still act stupid. They still think, oh no, but I'm fine as long as I'm not killing people like Hamas, as long as I'm not protesting, looking for Jewish blood, then I'm okay. Oh. You're not understanding. If you look at the Torah and you're confused at what you're supposed to be doing right now, that means you're lacking a connection with Hashem. If you look at the mitzvot and you see them as a burden, that means you're lacking a connection with Hashem. If you look at the customs of Judaism and you see them as something ugly, there's a disconnect between, between you and Hashem. If you look at anything else in the world as superior to the Torah, as better than the Torah, as something you prefer to do over the Torah, that means that the disconnect between you and Hashem. And the good news is, you still have time to fix that immediately if you take it seriously. Don't ask, oh, what should I do? Everything you possibly know. Do it immediately. Whatever HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you as the ability, use that ability, use that gift. And don't worry about the naysayers that say, you're a fanatic, you're this, you're that. No different than the terrorists that are on the live feed literally trying to entice each other to shut down this live. Literally, you're seeing, like every other comment, they're saying, come on, report, 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 so we could shut them down. They don't want the truth to come out because they want only their murders and their rapes to be publicized. Well, we publicize the holy truth of the Torah. Now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the only one that will decide whether this will reach you or this will not reach you. This will be publicized, this will not be publicized. No one can help you or hurt you other than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If you have trouble understanding that and engraving that into your heart, you have a disconnect with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You have to fix it immediately. One of the ways that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that you can help yourself start getting better is the Mishnah in Masechet Avot says, Schar mitzvah is mitzvah. The reward for one mitzvah is another mitzvah. So one of the ways is, go do a mitzvah right away. Go learn more Torah. Go give charity. Go pray. Go uh, do anything that you can and make it your life to do more mitzvot. Many times I, I see myself, Baruch Hashem, learning from tzaddikim just by simply standing next to them. They eat not because of the food. They eat because of the blessing. They bring all types of different incenses to the table. Why? There's more opportunities to make blessings. They read extra tehillim. Why? There's more opportunities to talk to Hashem. More opportunities to pray for Am Yisrael. They do all these different things that literally you see how Hashem is on their mind all day. Now you can't go from zero to tzaddik yesod olam overnight, but you could certainly do a mitzvah that could entice you to do another mitzvah. And says the prophet in chapter 3 after what we just said, Hashem says, stop stealing from me. What? Am Yisrael asks, what should we repent for? 
Hashem says, for stealing. What's stealing? What's stealing? Should a person steal from God as you steal from me? And you say, how have we stolen from you? Hashem responds, by withholding the ma'asel and the tuma offerings, you're cursed with a curse, yet you continue to steal from me, the entire nation. Bring all the ma'asel into the storage house and let it be sustenance in my temple. Test me, if you will. With this, says Hashem, Master of Legions, see if I do not open up for you the windows of for you the produce of the ground, and the vine will not cast off its fruit for you in the field, says Hashem, Master of Legions. All the nations will praise you, for you will be a land of delight, says Hashem, Master of Legions. Here, Kadosh Baruch Hu is literally telling us that one of the easiest mitzvot that a person can do, one of the easiest mitzvot that a person can do is donate to charity. The problem is that if you donate to the wrong charity, that charity can turn from a mitzvah into a sin. So you need merits in order for Hashem to direct your charity to the right cause. And therefore, says Hashem, if you do with all of your heart and you literally test Hashem, you do it on a regular basis, not at a one time you're inspired, let me give a bunch of money. No, but you do with all of your heart for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's honor, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bless you. And He'll protect you even from thieves, even from evil people. This is one of the things that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, test me. Test me with Maasel. Test me with Maasel. Test me with the tithe. And you'll see how I open up all the gates. You thought that you're going to be lacking as a result. More? To empower you to such an extent will also devour your enemies in the process. This is an easy way to literally see the hand of God in your day-to-day life. And the Gemayim Masechet Ta'anid, page 9b, says, a Jew that gives Ma'asil not only shows that he believes in God in his mouth, and his words, but also in his actions. And a person like that can grow spiritually to the point where they can certainly believe that no one can hurt you or, or help you aside from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Lastly, Rabutai, one who works on himself and does all of these things, the last part of the prophet Malachi says, your words have become harsh against me, says Hashem, but you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said it's useless to serve God. What gain is there for us that we have kept his watch and that we walk submissively before Hashem, Master of Legions? So now we praise the wicked evildoers. Evildoers are built up. They have even tested God and escaped. He says some people are questioning why should we keep the Torah and Mitzvot? Look, there are people that not only are uh, look like they're winning, look like they're uh, they're succeeding, like these terrorists. Looks like they're the ones that are winning. In fact, there are even some people that say, "Listen, if you help me now, then I'll do such and such." But they don't do it. That's what he's talking about: the people that are evil doers that test God and escape. It's like a person that says, "Oh, listen." Hashem, I need you to help me find a parking spot. I have this appointment in just a few minutes. All of a sudden, somebody pulls out of the parking spot. He says, oh, no, Hashem, I, don't worry. I figured it out on my own. You know, people like that, that make promises to Hashem, but don't deliver. Hashem says, eventually all of those people will see who runs the world. And even more so, those who fear Hashem Hashem listened and heard. And a book of remembrance was written before him. 
for those who fear Hashem and those who give thought to His name, they will be precious treasure for me, says Hashem, Master of Legions, on the day which I bring about and I will have mercy on them, as a man has mercy on his son who serves him. Then you will return and see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve Him. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the wicked people and all the evildoers will be like straw, and that coming day will burn them up, says Hashem, Master of Legions, so that it will not leave them a root or branch, but a son of righteousness will shine for you who fear my name with healing in its rays and you will go out and flourish like calves fattened in the stall and you will trample the wicked for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on that day that I bring about, says Hashem, Master of Legions. Remember the Torah of Moshe, my servant, which I commanded him at Cholev for all of Israel, its decrees and its statutes. Behold, I send you Eliyahu Anavi, Yaja the prophet, before the coming of the great and awesome day of Hashem, and he will turn back to God the hearts of fathers with their sons and the hearts of sons with their fathers, lest they come and strike the land with utter destruction. So here, Kadosh Baruch Hu makes a promise for all of those that instead of worrying about the news, instead of worrying about their house's location, instead of worrying about all of the prophecies they don't understand, but rather they worry about doing tshuva right now, getting closer to Hashem right now, pushing themselves further closer to Hashem right now, being more dedicated to learning Torah, being more charitable when possible, and pushing yourself even further with acts of chesed, pushing yourself further to love Am Yisrael and help them do tshuva, pushing yourself further to do all of what we talked about tonight, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, one of the rewards you're going to get at the end of days is not only will you see the reward of yourself of, of getting great, amazing, beautiful things, a son that heals all wounds. If you're crippled, you'll be able to walk. If you're blind, you'll be able to see. Literally, like the miracles, even greater than what happened at Mount Sinai. But you're also going to see once and for all. You're also going to see once and for all the reward for the righteous and the punishment for the wicked. You'll see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves Hashem and one who doesn't, where you'll see the people that didn't serve Hashem throughout all the generations resurrect and suffer endless suffering as a punishment. Part of it is being watching the reward of the righteous. And what they would have gotten had they actually did what Hashem said. But part of the reward for the righteous is to see the wicked that looked like they were winning while they were in this world. Because they won a battle here and there. Because they had uh, all types of material possessions. Hashem says, on that day you'll see all the evildoers, all the Rishayim, all the Hamas, all the idol worshippers, all of the terrorists, all of the evil in the world, you'll see them burn like straw. You'll see them burn like straw from the same sun that will heal the righteous people's wounds. And those wicked will become ashes under your feet. Why? Because you remember the Torah of Moshe, my servant. Not just on that day, but in preparation for that day, starting today. At that point, I will send Eliyahu Navi, who will introduce the Mashiach, who will give people that last push needed before the Mashiach himself arrives. And whoever has done tshuva by then has nothing to worry about. Whoever hasn't will see the utter destruction. As the last two words of prophecy we have in the Tanakh, is utter destruction. Viketi et aretz cherem. Four words in Hebrew. Viketi et aretz cherem. Are the four last words of prophecy we have from Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That 
If we do tshuva, we have nothing to worry about. If we don't do tshuva, the utter destruction will be beyond the scope of comprehension. It will make what happened last week look like a video game in comparison. All of these terrorists that are making comments, that are going against the Shem, that are going against the Jewish people, that are going against the Torah, all of those people, the utter destruction Hashem is promising here is literally something that is incomprehensible. But guess what? Anyone that does tshuva takes on the mitzvot now, starts keeping Shabbat now, starts keeping kosher now, starts following the Torah now, can not only avoid this destruction, but rather can put themselves in a situation where they're part of the blessing. The variance between the blessing and the curse is wider than the ocean. And now is the time to make a decision. These are the last couple of words of the prophet Malachi, who the Chachamim says, Ezra Sofer. These are the last words of prophecy we have and will have until Mashiach Tzidkenu comes. So as I said in the beginning of this year, if you're in Israel, you have nothing to worry about. You're in the safest place on planet Earth for the Jewish people. If you're a righteous Jew, if you're doing your best to be righteous, literally. But if you're wicked, if you're not following the Torah, there is no safe place for you. For these terrorists, nothing is safe for them. Only annihilation is their option. It's just a matter of time. Each one of them, each supporter, will have an annihilation that is simply something the world has never seen. Every single one of them. But a person that wants to go in the way of Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving us clear instructions from the last prophet that each and every single one of us can follow. Don't worry about your house. Don't worry about all of the materialism. If this is the end and you're in Israel, you're in good hands. If this is not the end and you're in Israel, you're still in good hands. If you want to go back to wherever you came from because you're on vacation, no problem, go back. If you're doing well wherever you are, as far as spiritually, doesn't matter where you are. The point being is, the bigger obligation that each and every one of us has, the bigger responsibility that each one of us has, the bigger a more important role and task at hand that each one of us is supposed to have right now is not to worry about real estate. It's not to worry about missiles, but rather worry about our, the status of our neshama and its connection to Hashem. And Bezat Hashem, each person will use this as a stepping stone that got them closer to Hashem before the end eventually became reality. I'll see if there's maybe some relevant questions and we'll finish up for the night. Some of you are complaining about the app or the things going offline. Uh, sorry about that. I have uh, how much that I can do about it. But as other than tomorrow, the show will be uh, in its complete form on uh, YouTube. So for anything that you missed, you'll be able to see it there. Uh, okay. Okay. 
I think that's it. Uh, see, there's a lot of nonsense by terrorists that don't know how to spell, read, write, just like their Muhammad doesn't know how to read or write. So there's not really much to answer there. Um, what time am I on every day? I, uh, well, usually I, in the past, I had three, uh, three English lectures per week at nine o'clock and one Hebrew. Uh, but um, now because of the times I'm doing, I'm trying to do my best to do something uh, almost every day at around um, this time. So I don't know, in Israel, I start around 12.30, one o'clock in the morning, uh, figure that out according to your clock, wherever you are. that uh, how much that um, are you allowed to kill people in the Torah, according to the Torah? Well, if you look at the uh, wars that uh, are mentioned in the Torah against Amalek, against Midian, there are laws of war. In fact, the Rambam has an entire section of uh, his uh, Yad HaChazaka that talks about the laws of war and kings. It's called Ilchot Melachim uh, Milchamot. And I made a lecture discussing it uh, yesterday and last week. Uh, okay, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. There's really nothing else that I could find. That's a very value um, to anybody, aside from making fun of terrorists, which I don't really have the energy to do anymore. They're just uh, they're really a waste of lives. Um, so that's it, Rabotai. Thank you very much for learning with me. May Hashem bless each and every single one of you that is actually here to learn Torah and uh, get closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Anyone that wants to support all the wonderful things that our organization is doing, you can go to the website, bezatashem.org, B-E-E-Z-R-A-T-H-A-S-H-E-M.org, or you can donate on the app, or you can donate on the new campaign that we have, bhchesed.org, B-H-C-H-E-S-E-D.org. And or you can donate on Facebook, on YouTube, and a bunch of other places. If you really want to donate, you could certainly uh, find a way to donate to our cause. Uh, and uh, everything that we're doing, we have a uh, lot of stuff that we're trying to do. We just got an order of 15,000 tzitziot and bottles of water, uh, which we need uh, quite a bit more than what we have to, to fulfill. So, B'zat Hashem, your help is uh, certainly appreciated, whatever you could do. Call to B'chav and B'zat Hashem will learn again tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.